I'm going to show you how I fill the feeders and with what and why. Different species, I have different lengths of uplands. Look at that lovely F1. Yellow folk, are they? How about that? We're fishing under the far bank. Why are we doing that? It's all about swim management. I'm going to show you my setups, the rods, the reel, the lines, the feeders, the hook baits, the hooks and everything that I'm going to put on. And trust me, you'll catch loads of fish. Hi and welcome, I'm here at the fabulous Lindome Lakes and we're on the Strip Lake. The Strip Lake is full of carp, it's full of F1s, but what I'm going to show you today is how I fish a method feeder or a banjo style feeder fishing. I'm going to show you my setups, the rods, the reel, the lines, the feeders, the hook baits, the hooks and everything that I'm going to put on. I'm going to show you how to mix with pellets, how to mix the ground bait and how it goes on the feeder, which is the most important part of any type of feeder fishing, the preparation of the feeder. So I'm going to show you all them and I hope you learn a few things. One of the most important things about method feeder fishing or banjo, juro style uh, feeder fishing is the bait. And the biggest question I get asked is simple. Is it ground bait or is it pellets? I ain't got a clue. The fish will tell you, I don't know. So what I do do, I prepare both because some days it's ground bait and some days it's pellets. But the fish will let you know. It's simple, go out with pellets. If you don't catch, try ground bait. And some days it's one and some days it's other. So you've always got to have them ready to put on your feeder. The preparation of how you put them baits on the feeder I'm going to show you a little bit later on, but that's the second most important thing. So how do I prepare my bait? First of all, my pellets. First of all, if always check on the fishery. Is it fishery on pellets? And we're at Lindholm Lake, so I'm using fishery pellets. And the first thing I do, I get my two mil pellets, which is usually the, the right one to put on the feeder, <coughs> and I look at the colour. It's really important that you look at the colour. If they're very pale and they're very light, it means they haven't got a lot of oil in. If they haven't got a lot of oil in, what happens is they break up too quick and you can't soak them as long. So look at the colour to see how dark they are. Now they're a lovely pellet, they're a dark brown, so I know I can probably soak these as long as I need them to soak. And I know that it'll spread all the way through, they're not mixed pellets. So that's the first thing you do, always check the colour of the pellets. And the next thing is I have a bowl and I have a riddle. There's different variations on the market, but I've got that, that riddle. It just fits in my little bowl, I just tip the pellets in. Into, on top of the riddle, like that. And then I get my water and I cover them in water. Now the pellets are two mil. If they were very, very pale, I wouldn't even do them for two mil. But because they're a dark pellet and they've got the oil in, I'll leave them for a minimum of two minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave them there to soak. And then what I'm going to show you now is the ground bait and how I mix the ground bait. So what ground bait do I use? Lots of variations on the market, but if you're going to commercial fishery, you have got to have a pellet based ground bait. I'm not saying you won't catch on natural ground baits, but if you're on here with all the amount of pellets that go in, the fish know and understand what they are. So you need a pellet based ground bait. And the one that I'm using and I like at the moment is a mixture of two. In the summer, what I will do is this 50 50 mix, I will use two parts of that. So I'll put one pint in, two pints in, and then one, one, one of my favourite ground baits is Super Crush Expander, and I will use one mix of that. Now that's in the summer. If it was in the winter, it would be the other way around. It would be two one, and two would be Super Crush Expander. And all I would do then, put them in the bowl, mix them up, and then you want to add some water. I've got three pints of bait in there, so what I'm going to do to start with, I'm going to put two pints of water. Just put one, two, and basically mix it up. And what I like to do to start with, I like it to go just a little bit sloppy. So it goes a little bit sloppy because it's going to dry out. And if you get it sloppy like that, it'll dry out and it'll be an absolute perfect mix. So three pints of ground bait, two pints of water, mix it up. You might think, oh, I've just overdone it a little bit, but yeah, because it's going to dry out. Then the next thing is just leave it to soak and just leave it like that. And that's all that I do until I come to the end, end before, just before I start fishing. And that's all that you do to mix your ground bait. It's important that you have a pellet based ground bait. Let's go back to pellets. As you can see, I don't know whether you can see that now, you can see that the pellets are actually swelling up and in the water. 
What you don't want to do is make them go too sloppy. What you're trying to do is get the pellets so there's spring and the spring back out. So that we're on, when they're on the bottom, on the water, when they, when they sponge and they spin out like that, they push the bait out and the fish come in and suck them all in. They've been over two minutes now, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them off and I'm going to leave them. You can do these at home, and in the winter I do, but in the summer this time of year, because it happens pretty quick, you can actually do them as soon as you get to your peg, which is the first thing you do when you get to your peg. Not so much the ground bait, but certainly the pellets, and then just put them there and get your tattle set up. As you can see, I did prepare a few earlier, and you can see the difference in the two pellets now from half an hour. They're nice and spongy, they're the ones that are preparing, but them will be like them in about half an hour. So just be patient, get them right, and you can see that they will stick together now. Like that, which I know will go on, go on the feeder absolutely perfect. So I've got my pellets, they're all ready, and my ground bait. 10 minutes before you start fishing, you can see that ground bait will like slop, and look at it now with that water and I can actually boil it up. You can see it's different now because it's drying out. Now, although it's not quite right, what I'm going to show you is the final thing that I do. And if you've got a drill and you can drill it, you don't need to do this. So if you've got a drill, you drill, but most people aren't. But the last thing you do before you do anything, what you do, you always put it on a riddle. Put it on a riddle and, and zoom it through like that. And just put it through your riddle and what it does, it separates, see all these lumps here, they're all wet, they're wet as anything. And they're wet, and you can see that they're going through now, until, I've just put a bit too much on there, it don't matter. And you can see now, that that is all nice and spongy, it's all nice and fine and fluffy, and that's perfect. You do that 10 minutes before you start fishing, because it's dried out, it's absorbed all the water, it's got the ground bait nice and moist and, and done. So, basically, Pellets, ground bait. Which do I use? I don't know, the fish will tell you. But I'll show you how to put it on the feeder and we'll go catch a few fish. One of the things I'm very particular on is my setup, my organisation at my peg. I spend a lot of time to get it, get it so I'm comfortable, I'm sat in a nice posture and uh, I'm not, back's not bent or anything like that. But the most important thing is my rod, my rod rest and where the position on it. Now I'm right handed, so if you're left handed just reverse everything that I'm, I'm telling you. But I like the rod on my right hand side. Lots of people nowadays, the modern day angler, they have it in front of them. They cast out, they hit the clip and they put it in front of them. And I can't think of anything worse than that because if you'll get a bite, it goes like that. But when you pick the rod up, you've got no bend in the rod to play the fish on. And what happens is you get broke quite easy. And you find out that lots of anglers they use bigger hook lengths and bigger hooks simply because they get broke. So what I do, I have more into the side, I have a bigger angle, angle to where I'm actually casting to, so when I get a bite it goes round like that, I can pick it up and I'm into the bend of the rod. Now that, see that, not a liner then, but I'm looking for the bend of the rod to play the fish on. I can pump the fish, I don't have to give it line, I can use the bend of the rod almost like, the, you know, in, in a pole uh, you get the elastic and you use the, the play the fish on the elastic, the bend of the rod is, is that important so I can pull into the fish. But also, I put it down and it's hands free. It's not round me, it's not across me, it's not doing anything. I can pick all the bait up, I can feed me other lines, and I know that if I get a bite, the rod will be round and the bend of the rod will take all the cushion out of me and it won't break me off. So for me, it's important that I have it on my right hand side, I, I have it in a rest, I have a long rest, I have an inch off the water, and I have an, at least a 70 to 90 degree pull. So when it goes round, I pick it up, I'm into the bend of the rod, and I can play the fish. It's just what I, what, what I like to do. It's a cushion effect, but it's the best way in my opinion. We've been catching F1s, and I think I've finally caught a carp. Now, because I've got the rod set at that 
70 to 90 degree angle, it nearly pulled in and it didn't break me. So all you do when you get one, just take your time, keep your rod nice and low and hope the fish don't go right camera man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a little carp. No, I don't know, it might be a big F1. But it's still a nice fish though. There we go. Keep rod nice and low. And then when it comes inside, you can lift it up. And hopefully, sometimes, what happens is if you bring it in, and you can bring it into the side, you can bring it up, and you can sometimes get it in one swoop. But that's a little carp. Oh, nice fish. I think it's a little common. Oh, look at that nice red tail come up. Oh, yeah, look at that, a bonny fish. Oh, this is definitely a nice fish. Just take your time. A lot of people panic at this time and don't they see it and they want to get it in. Well, don't. Just take your time. It's hard enough to get on. So just let it come in. There you go, look at that beauty. Oh, look at that. Nice fish there. Oh, five pound it. Look at that, that's a bonny one. Now that's a nice on the banjo feeder. A nice fish. Let's show you it. Look at that. <laughs> Right, I'm going to talk to you now about tattle and getting your tattle right and getting it balanced. I have a set routine where I do with tattle. When I'm fishing, when I'm rod fishing, it's about the distance that I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing up to 30 metres, it'll be a 10 foot rod. If I'm fishing above 30 to 40, it'll be 11 foot. And above that, it'll be 12 or 13. But you come on a place like this, it's, it's only 30 yard wide. I'm only using 10 foot. And I just use MVR 10 foot feeder rods. I use a medium tip, which is, a, which is an ounce, which I, I'm, a, a, I'm a tip person, to be honest with you. And uh, it's, but what I like in commercials are soft rods. I don't like stiff rods. And, and one of the reasons for that is I can play the fish better. I can use little hooks and lighter lines. And I believe I get more bites that way and more fish. So I like 10 foot for short distance. And as you can see, it's nice and soft. I can bend into the rod and it's nice and simple. But I'm, I like tips and I don't use anything above an ounce. All tips I use are an ounce or three quarters. I don't like half ounce tips. I just find that ounce is just about right. So that's my rod. It's a nice 10 foot. Reels, 4,000 size for this. I only use the five, five and a half when I'm going distance, perhaps above 50 yard. But up to 50 yard, you can get away with, with a 4,000 size reel. The line I use eight pound or 0.26, and it's the carp feeder line. It's best line I've ever used for feeder fishing. You might think, crikey, that's that, that's a bit thing, but your commercial fishing, it makes no difference at all. Don't be thinking you've got to use three and four pound lines. You don't have to. Hey, look, nice mirror there, look. So put two six on, 0.26, it's eight pound, it's strong, it's made for commercial fishing. And then the feeders. There are two different styles of feeders. And you've got your banjo style, which is, which is that style where the actual, you put the bait in like that, you press it in. So that's a banjo style. And the other one is a traditional method feeder, which is that one, where you get a mould like that and you put it on and you press it on with that. Each has its own advantages. When I'm catching lots of fish and the fish are free feeding and in the summer, I'll nearly always want to catch them on a method. But when I'm fishing for a few fish and in the winter, I think that's too open and the bait, there's too much bait on there. So I'll use the banjo style. So, but the easiest ones to use is the banjo style. That's the easiest ones to use because you cannot, it's very difficult to get it wrong because you're actually pressing the bait 
into the into the feeder you're not putting it on like you are with a method but them's the two most popular styles of of commercial feeder fishing and they just run onto a speedy bead like that there are different ones that go inside i don't like them i like to use the one that bounces onto a speedy bead like that and the up lens I will use, it depends on the hook, like the 18s I'll probably use 014, a 16 to 016, and if I'm on a, a, a 14 I'll probably have an 018 or an 020. And usually they are four inches long on, on a normal co uh, commercial fishery. And that's a simple setup it is get. All the places I go to it's all free running, so I'm a, I use free running feeders. You can get them with elasticated, and some venues allow that, and if they allow that and you want to do that, but I don't like extras on my feeder. I like it free running. I don't see anything more simple than that. I just think it's perfect. So even if it were allowed, elasticated feeders or fixed, I still prefer it free running. And that's my tattle. It's as simple as that. 10 foot rod, nice and soft, MBR rods, uh, 4 thousandths size reel. Uh, my line is 0.26 onto either a banjo style feeder, they're the UV, uh, UVA and or a method size and that's my simple setup simple as that right that's another nice f1 in the net so while the tackle's out what i'm going to show you now i'm going to show you how i fill the feeders and with what and why and also i'm going to talk about it's really important the length of that hook length it's really important but first thing you need to do is always check the fishery rules because every fishery is a bit different some don't even allow methods they use you have to use an open feeder always check the rules but if you're allowed to use a method or a banjo style feeder the hook length is really important now why is it important i learned a few years ago that with different species of fish is different hook lengths matter and i and i learned by getting a battery enough for ladding in, uh, in Italy on the, on the uh, Tiber River. He was catching chub on a, on a pellet feeder with sticky mags and I couldn't catch him. And I, and I was fishing four inches and I couldn't catch him. When I got one, it was a small one. He weighed 14 kilo, I weighed eight. I got a right good hiding. After the match, I run down and I went. Before I got to him, I was like that. And he said to me, your hook length, Tommy, was too short. And I went, what do you mean four inches? No, no, not for chub. It needs to be six inches or or 15 centimetres. I went, really? So I went back to my peg and I put six inches and cast it out at the end of the match. It went, dunk, big chub, second cast, big chub, barbel. The year after I went over and I did that and it was, I caught and won two matches by doing that using a six inch up length. So on the way home I started thinking, hmm, I wonder if it makes a difference with other species and it does. And what I've learnt now over the years is if the fishery rules allow it, when I'm fishing just for F1s, a three inch hook length is best. When I'm fishing for carp and F1s, a four inch hook length is best. When I'm fishing for bream, five inches. And when I'm fishing for chub and barbel on a river, six inches. It makes a massive difference, it really does. So the different species, I have different lengths of hook lengths. But when I come on a commercial, I'm fishing for carp and F1s, it'll be three or four inches. A lot of fisheries have four inches, well if that's the case, it's four inches. So it's either three or four inches on a commercial fishing. So the feeders, how do I load the feeders? Well, first thing is, is the hook bait. The hook bait, if you want to colour bait, you've got these new Fuka baits that you've got four different lovely colours. You've got white, yellow, red, orange. The stand out, the brilliant. You can just hook them as normal, like I've just there, I've got it just hooked. You can hair rig them, you can put a pin in them, you can you can mould them about and put them in your bait. Or you can just use the commercial fishery pellets. Sometimes, because I'm firing at six mils in, you pick a six mil up and you put that on. But if you want to cull a bait, try them. I promise me you won't be disappointed. But that hook bait is important, but it's only important when it's inside the feeder. Because the fish come to the feeder, they want to feed on the feeder. So if that's loose and it's away from it, you won't get a bite. It's got to be tucked in, it's got to break down with a hook bait in the middle. So when I'm, when I'm fishing a banjo style feeder, it's quite simple. I just fill it with pellets. I press it as hard as I can. So they're all in the bottom like that. I get the hook bait. I put it on the top like that. And you can see now with pellets, nice bright hook bait there stuck out. And then I gently cover over the top. And first one I press gently, second one a bit gentler, and the third one quite tough. So eventually 
when I do that and I put it into the mould of my hands and I press it as hard as I can. The tool mill pellets are spongy, you're compressing them, when they get in the water they'll pop out like that and your hook bait will be sat on the top. Now I can't see that hook bait and I don't want that because I think when you cast and it's the water I think the pellets get knocked off. So I think it's important but what I've got to do is make it firm enough like that. So that I know when it goes in the water the holes in the bottom will push the pellets out and your hook bait will be in the thing. The fish come in, suck them all in with your hook bait. And that's how a banjo style method feeder is perfect and the best way to, to load it. That's, to be honest with you, as good as it gets. Now, like I said, that's one way and that's the easiest way. If you're stuck and you're not quite sure, use that style of feeder because it's the easiest way to do it. But it might not be the best. So, with that feeder, you normally only put in pellets on. You wouldn't normally put ground bait in. But when the fish want ground bait, you, you use a method style feeder. It's different when the fish respond to, to method. And also, as you can see just here, I've got pellets and I've got ground bait. And like I said at the start, when I was mixing my ground bait, I don't know it's about the fish and it's about the, what the fish want to do. Sometimes it's a mixture and I always have a little bowl inside me called my mixing bowl. And sometimes it'd be a handful of ground bait and an handful of pellets because I can't make my mind up what the fish want. And I might mix it up so it's 50-50 or even a few more pellets or a bit more ground bait. And what I do then, I, I find out that that's the best. So there'll be an option that you can do. But if you've got both mixed up, it's easy to have a little mixing bowl outside of you. And I'll be honest with you, I catch more fish probably on this with the ground bait and the pellets, especially on the method, than I do anything else. I wouldn't use that in a banjo style feeder because it won't come out because it's ground bait. But on a method, this is what you do. That's a method feeder, just a small method feeder. I've just got a yellow focal bait on, like that, four inches up length, and all I'm going to do there with this, you get a mould. So, if I'm going to fish ground bait, I always put a little bit in the bottom and I put the bait in, in the middle and I make sure it's smack in the middle, in the middle. I overfill it then and then I press on and I press it as hard as I can and then I release it. Now you can't see that bait but that's where I want. I don't want to see it. I don't, want it, I don't like it on the top because I think when it on the top it hits the surface and it comes off. So that's how you feed with ground bait, it's dead easy. Just a little tip for you, if you ever get ground bait or pellets that stick in a mould, get a little bit of dry ground bait and just sprinkle it in the bottom. Only a right little pinch in the bottom and it won't stick to the mould. We've all had it, I know because I've had it, so I know everybody's had it. And then if you want pellets, all you do is, is basically the same thing. You've got your hook bait on, get your pellets, Put a few in the bottom, I always put a few in the bottom, put your hook length in the middle, put it with pellets and press it. Press it as hard as you can and there you can see is pellets on a method feeder. Now then, I'm going to tell you something now, when on that, because I've only got pellets in, I've done it for a reason to show you, you can see that there's holes in the pellets. Because there's holes in the pellets, where they meet, they've not met together perfectly. So, what happens is, it goes through the end, it's the water, they get knocked off, easily. So, the deeper the water, what you've got to do is fill them holes in. And all you do is put an handful of ground bait in. So you get an handful of ground bait in, you put it in with your pellets, oh sorry, wrong tub there, just fill it like that, just put an handful of ground bait in, and what happens there is, you fill it up, and you'll see now, that that bit of ground bait has filled the holes in. You don't need a lot, you only want an handful. And you press it, and look at the difference there, it's all filled in now. All the, all the holes are filled in, so I know that will get to the bottom before it breaks up. Because the only thing I'm interested in is getting that to the bottom before it breaks up. I don't want it breaking up, going down, you get fish all over, your hook bait comes away from your bait, and you won't get a bite. Trust me, you won't get a bite. So, make sure that your presentation there is the most important thing. It might be ground bait, it might be pellets, it might be a mixture of them both. It might be a mixture, that's why I always have a little mixing bowl to make sure that it's perfect. And them's the, what, them's the things that I do regarding hook lens, 
the way that I fill the feeders. And you'll fill the feeders that way and cast it in and make sure it goes plop and trust me, you'll catch loads of fish. Right, prepare my feeder. That's the most, there's three things in feeder fishing. One is pre preparation of that feeder. That's the most important thing. If you don't get that right, you'll never get a bite. So it's important that you get that right. Two is how it hits the water. So it's got, as you cast out, and just before it hits the water, you put your finger on it or it hits the clip and it goes plop. If it goes splosh on the water, it'll knock it off. So you've got to go plop. Then the third one, obviously, is don't move the feeder. You must never do that. They are the three points on feeder fishing. But where do I fish in my peg? And I believe that swim management is the, the most important thing about fishing, is where I'm going to fish. And I'm on a lake here that's 30 yard wide. I don't particularly want to go to the far bank straight away. I want to save that. I want to try and catch the fish in, in different areas. So today what I'm doing, I'm fishing a line where I can feed my pellets over. Because I know if the fish come on them pellets, it's going to be easy. I'm going to catch lots and lots of fish. So really, you fire some pellets in, and that's where you fish. So like I'm firing sixes in, and they're going about 25 metres, so that's where I'm going to fish. There's no point fishing past them or this side of them. You want to be around where the pellets are. The pellets hit the water, the mechanoise will go on the water, and what happens is then the fish then come in and they roam. So I prepare my feeder. All I'm going to do now, a nice gentle cast, Cast it out, plop. It's hit the bottom. I'm then going to just put the line under and I'm going to let it sink. I'm not going to move the feeder. I'm just going to let the tension of the line take itself and it sinks so it goes under the surface thing. And I know that cast now is smack where my, feet, where my pellets have hit the water. So I know they'll be feeding fish there. Then I'm going to put it on the, on the rod rest. I'm, I'm very careful not to move the feeder. I'm going to put it in a position where it's hands free. So it's in a nice position like that. I pick my catapult up, and what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put like 15, 20 pellets, and I'm gonna fire it over that spot. So it goes like that, there you go. There you go, straight, straight, the fish are feeding now, smack on them pellets. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I don't wanna catch them. I want the fish to come to the, to the feeder and not the pellets, so I don't, I don't start at the start of the match by doing that because if the fish are there, I want them to come straight to my feeder. But when I want to get the fish there, especially when there's anglers round you competing, right, and, and they're doing the same, I don't want the fish to go to them. So I'm always in my mind, hey up, I'm going to drop my landing net then. There you go, nice F1. Now, so what I'm looking for is to draw them fish before anybody else does. So I'm very conscious of of doing that. So the idea is to feed, make a noise, feed the fish, throw your feeder in the middle, and it's amazing how many fish you can catch by doing that. Noise is so important. It's like uh, the, one of the most important things about fishing in the summer on a commercial. And that's all that you do. So it's quite simple. You put the bait on, you put, get your feeder in this case, it's the banjo, the fuel pellets in, because I've got a fish pretty quick there. And all I do, I fill it over, fill it with the two micros, and I get the palm in my hand. You don't need a mole for this, and I press it as hard as I can like that, so they're all flat. I then get the hook, and I put the hook into the pellets. And then I place the pellet, or the hook bait, where I want it. I put it on the top, press. I put some more on, because I want to cover then that pellet, just keep putting them on and press it and then the last thing I do, I put it right into the palm of my hand and that's almost like a mould and I do it and I press it on and that is as good as it gets and then all I do again, the same routine cast it, break, plop, rod under just sink there, let, let the line sink, just take your time, don't pull it, if you pull it you'll move the feeder so you, all you do is take your time like that, put it 
put it on the rod rest in a position. One of the most important things, I see, what I see is, I see people rushing it and trying to do it 100 mile an hour. Just take your time. The best method feeder angler I've ever known is a lad called Andy Finlay. And he's also the slowest, but he catches the most fish. There you go, the fish are there now. There you go, look, I'm getting indications and liners. I pick it up and one on. That's, that's because now the fish have come, have come to the pellets and, and, and it's easy now because what's happened is the fish are feeding, they've come into the pellets and it's a routine. And that's what you've got to do is get yourself into a routine, but the right routine. And just take your time when you get a fish. Take your time. So, as you can see, a basic setup, a basic pattern, your rod, your reel, your line, your feeder, the way you put it on, the hook bait are really, really important. And you can catch, if you get it right, you can catch great big F1s like this. And just take your time, it's not a rush, it's not a rush, it's about getting them out, not, not a race. And we've got, there we go. Look at that for an F1. Woohoo! Get in there. So, if you get your tackle right and you get your feeding right, you can catch fish just like that. Right, so I presented the feeder. I've got the bait on the feeder. That's the most important thing. Of the three most important things, that's the number one. I've prepared that perfectly. I'm happy with that. The next thing now is to make sure it hits the water and goes plop and not splosh. If it goes splosh, it lands like that and it gets knocked off. You've got to make it land that way, lead first, so it goes plop. So when you cast it out, you just want to overcast it if you're going 20 metres. In your head, think 22 metres, and then it hits the rod and it goes plop. It pulls the rod down and cushions it onto the water. So I'm going to cast out now. You always pick an, an object opposite you. Like I'm going to pick that second platform, that's my target where I'm going to go to. The next thing then is to adjust your body and face that target. You can't cast sideways and cast over your own, it will go everywhere. Turn your body and then face the target that you're going to go to. Then you get your rod, I'm right handed, so my right hand is my direction, my left hand is, the, is power. So the further I want to cast, I bring the left hand in and I pull the rod through as I'm casting. But I'm only casting 25 metres, so it doesn't really matter today. I don't have to pull the rod through. But what I do, I put my arm out straight, I face the rod at the target, I put the, the bait in front of me, I don't waggle it about, I bring it straight past the rod. Like that, bring it past the rod. And then when I get to that position, it's in a straight line to my target, I put my hand on the butt and I pull, plop. And then I let it, let it hit the bottom. And that's the way it goes, but it can't go anywhere else but straight. Because if you cast sideways, what happens is, as your rod goes round, your tip will be going from left to right. And look at the feeder, how it's swinging. So if I cast when it's, when it's there, it will go to the right. And when it's there, it will go to the left. So the idea is to get it, in straight line is bring the feeder past the rod. Bring it past the rod, cast it, plop. And it can't go anywhere else but straight. Then let it hit the bottom and don't move a feeder and you'll get a perfect cast. And that's what you do to cast it in a straight line to the same spot the whole time. Right, hook baits. Hook baits is really important when you're fishing with the method feeder. And the simple answer to it is, if you're catching fish on a hook bait, you don't have to change. You don't have to mess about. But what is the hook bait? What do the fish want? Well, it's up to you as the fisherman to find out what's best. Sometimes, because you love feeding pellets over top of your feeder, it's better just to have a banded pellet on like that. But sometimes you want a colour bait uh, or something that's just a little bit different so the fish can be attracted to it, see it, pick it up quickly in all that bait that you're going to put in. So what I'm going to show you is this new Fuka bait. I'm going to show you how to hook it. And there's different ways that you can actually hook it. Well, first of all, if you're on the pole or you're on the waggler uh, or on a method feeder and you just want to use a hook with no band or anything like that, you can actually get it and you can hook it. And all you do is put the hook into the bait and turn it onto the hook. And you can see that that's hooked perfectly. So if I'm on the pole, that's how I would hook it. 
But of course, in a method feeder and a short upwind, sometimes the fish are pulling at it and you want a little bit more security. So you can do a couple of things. You can either use a little uh, stop, quick stop, so you can pick a pellet up, you can p pass it through the centre, pull it out the other end, like that, turn it round and put the quick stop on the bait. And that way, that's one way, that, that will never come off. Or you can use a pin. You get a little pin, like that, where you, where you put it on, and what you can do with that pin, you can press it in, just push it in like that, and that's easy. But the beauty about these baits is they're very colourful. You've got the white, the orange, the red and the yellow, and they stand out on a method feeder. And when the pellets are moved, there's a nice bright up bait there, it's actually perfect for the fish and they'll just suck it straight in. But of course, them's the best ways to put them on. So you can use a pin, a quick stop, or you can just hook it natural. And them's the best ways of hooking any bait that goes on or in a method feeder. Right, what we're doing now, we're fishing under the far bank. And why are we doing that? It's all about swim management. We're catching lots of fish in the middle, but different times of the day fish feed, I think, in different areas. And especially if you've got a far bank that's not too far, or an island, you can bet your bottom dollar you've got to fish there at some time during the day. And especially in the later stages of the matches when the fish want to move into shallower water. Now they're backed off from where I'm fishing now, so what I've been doing, I've been fishing on the, on the far bank, under the platform, and we've been catching a few fish there. So it's all about swim management. So what I've been doing is catching them in the middle, as soon as they back off, and they nearly always do on, on, an, on an island or a, a short far bank, and you cast to the far bank, that's where they'll go, they'll, like they're coming to the sides. In the last hour the fish will be in the margins of the side, that's why you fish it in the last hour. You normally feed in the margins, but it's no different over there. The only difference over there is there's nobody on the bank. So where is people about here and there's a lot of disturbance, there isn't over there. So you can bet your bottom dollar that the fish will move to the far bank. And that's what we're doing at the moment, we're picking one or two off on that far bank line. But Typical fishing, never forget to feed the line that you've been fishing all day, because you might want to come back to it. Just because you think the fish have gone across there, still pick your cat catapult up and fire it. Now when I fire the pellets in, I fire them over the line that's going through the water. And if I go in and my tip starts going like that with little indications when the pellets have hit the water, I know the fish have come back onto that middle line. So, just think on, it's very, very rare that you catch in a competition from one spot. If you'll catch from one spot all day, you'll win the match quite comfortably. You've usually got to move to a different spot because fish feed at different times, in different places, at different times of the day. So never let yourself down. There you go, we've got one. And that's just because I've been feeding across and then I've fed down the inside. So, just keep it nice and tight. When you get one, just bring it in, keep your rod nice and low. And if you can do that and you'll get your timings right, trust me, that's when you get big weights. Never neglect the far bank when you can reach it, because usually that's your area to go when you stop catching in the middle. There you go, oh, look at that, that's a nice fish. Play the fish nicely, nice and slow. Take your time. Oh, I think it's a little carp. This I'm catching some really nice F ones, and this looks like a carp. Look at that. It is it's a little carp. I don't think it's, it's not a big fish, but it's a carp. I 
Oh, it's in, even I'm wrong, it's a big F1. What do I know? There you go, look at that, three pound. Thanks for coming. So, we've caught that and some other fish simply because I stopped getting bites and indications on my middle line. We changed and went to far back and we started catching through there. So, you've got your choices and that's what you're doing, just proves that it works. Right, under the far bank, and, and we had a couple of F1s. It went a little bit quiet. I was just thinking about moving, and all of a sudden, round it's gone, and we've got a lad, a carp on. So they went quiet because some carp moved in, and we've got one, and which is typical last, last hour at day, and it feels like a good fish. It's thumping anyway, but that's typical of time of day. It's four o'clock now, and this has went big and moving to margins, up far banks. Ooh, just take your time. It's not a rush. It's all about getting them out. Oh yeah. Looks like an eight pounder, a little Miro. Oh, look at that, nice. Oh, could have had him then. Slipped up there. But it's still on the up, it's not a race. Look at that, he's mine. Oh, get in there. <laughs> That's a cracking day. Now, if these have moved in, this is when you start building the big weight up. These have moved the F1s out, and we've got a nice eight pounder. Look at that, I've got a right hump on its back, that one. Well, what a day, what a fantastic day. We've caught loads of fish. Today they were in the middle, and then they went to the far bank, but by doing that and feeding them lines it gives you an extra ch chance so them's all my tips everything about feeder fishing method feeder fishing banjo style feeder fishing we've had a fantastic day i hope you've had a few tips i hope you learned a few things oh go away now try them and hope you enjoy them